Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are proud to present our next speaker, Tim Hall, with Influx Data. Please give him a warm welcome. All right. Thank you. Woohoo! All right. We're going to keep you all awake for 20 minutes. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about time series data, uh, gathering metrics and events, um, some no-code integration options we have if you're using a variety of AWS services, and then, of course, how to get started. So let's get right into it. So first of all, we're living in an age of instrumentation. Uh, the world of just using logs to try to capture information about your systems is long gone. And of course, with all this stuff going on over here in the IoT space, every IoT use case is throwing off a wide variety of sensor data, all with timestamps. The question is, what do you do with all that stuff? You've got to put it somewhere. So as we're putting sensors out in the physical world, you're also seeing an explosion of time series data in the virtual world. So your move to containerization, Kubernetes, all the cloud-based services, on-prem, everywhere. You're gathering information about all those systems and services. Where does it go? How about InfluxDB? So we're built an open source platform for dealing with time series data. It's a purpose-built database. You might have heard uh, the keynote this morning talking about purpose-built systems. Well, we're a purpose-built system for time series data. And we allow you to pour that data in at very high speed and I'll allow you to analyze it and take action on it. So very specifically, first, you've got to accumulate the data. Events, metrics, log data, traces, all of that is time series data. Pour it into InfluxDB in the center so you can do analysis and then take action on it either through visualization, alerts, or other triggers. So specifically in terms of feature set, we want you to accumulate that data as quickly as possible. And I'll show you a little bit about the architecture and the pieces that allow you to do this. But everything from specialized client libraries that you can use with your code, whether it's Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, Go, we have libraries to help you do that. Second, that, that data is sent to Influx, stored and compressed at scale, which then allows you to analyze it by writing queries on top of the data. It's pretty straightforward. And second, you can look for changes over time, changes that are occurring to your data. That's what you're, that's, is uh, the thing that tells you there's an anomaly going on. You establish those baselines and then look for what's happening. And then last but not least, of course, you want to take action on it. You can send out alerts, Slack, PagerDuty, custom integrations through HTTP. And to take a look at what those pieces look like, the open source core, the database is there, InfluxDB, all open source, runs on a single node. You can run it wherever you want, run it on your laptop, run it on a Raspberry Pi. Okay, scales up, scales down. Second, Telegraph. In addition to the client libraries for data collection, we have Telegraph, which is a specialized agent that has over 200 plugins that allow you to collect data from a wide variety of sources and standards-based integrations, everything from AMQP, HTTP, and others. That Telegraph agent was actually built by us, and we contributed five specific plugins to it. One of them is an output plugin for InfluxDB. Most of the other plugins have been contributed by our community members. So tested, certified, run, uh, gathering data from a wide variety of sources. And then, of course, we have two commercial offerings. InfluxDB Enterprise, which is a horizontal scale-out uh, and secure addition, um, and InfluxDB Cloud. Guess where InfluxDB Cloud runs? Hey, yeah, this guy's smart. He should get that sweatshirt, Evan. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about gathering metrics and events. If you're running uh, within the AWS environment, there's two things you can do. First and foremost, we have a bunch of AWS specific plugins that have been built. Um, the most generic one, of course, is you can use it to tap into your CloudWatch stats. How many are using CloudWatch already for gathering some stats? Okay. That, there's a ton of stuff in there, and there's lots of different statistics you could tap into. Typically, we look at that for gathering metadata about what's running in your environment. And you can use that to grab things like region, uh, the namespace, the names of the servers, and so on and so forth. In addition, there's um, the uh, ECS plugin uh, that also has uh, Fargate compatibility. So if either of those two containers, you can go ahead and uh, deploy that plugin and gather specific information about those containers within your EC2 environment. Now, secondarily, there's a ton of other plugins, obviously, and you can use them generically within the AWS environment to manage to, to gather information and metrics from applications, your build and deploy systems, the cloud environment itself, other containers, data store, IoT, if you're out here in the world, logging, messaging, networking, all of these things will work within the AWS environment. And you can combine that with anything you want out of CloudWatch to provide that contextual metadata and tie those pieces of information together. Now that's all about monitoring 
within the AWS environment itself. But what if you're building an application inside of AWS and you've got data that's flowing in? So for example, we have ability for you to tap in to that information without writing any code. Let me show you some examples. First and foremost, uh, let's say you're using uh, Kinesis. So if you're using Kinesis, anybody in the audience using Kinesis? Okay, a couple folks. So if you're gathering data through that, that mechanism, we have a specific Telegraph plugin for Kinesis that will allow you to both push data and pull data from the Kinesis uh, app into Influx, or you can take information from Influx and push it back to Kinesis if you want to use that as a mechanism for alerting and coordinating with other systems. Secondarily, query and join. Within Influx Cloud and Influx, uh, within Influx Cloud today, we have a query language called Flux. Flux is a language for working with data where it resides. And first and foremost, it obviously allows you to query data within inside of InfluxDB, but that's not all. Flux also allows you to uh, join your non-time series data with other data sources. So in the case of this query, I'm writing a SQL from, and I'm writing my typical SQL statement, select everything from a test table. What does that allow me to do? It allows me to embed SQL queries right inside my Flux uh, query and allows me to join my non-time series data with my time series data. This is typically a problem that's pushed on application developers. If you're using those specific data sources that are built for purpose, then it becomes the job of the developer to write application code to join that data together. With Flux, you don't have to do that. No code. Write a simple query, import that library, and if you're using uh, RDS of MySQL flavor, MariaDB, or Postgres, just write your normal SQL statement and allow Flux to pull that data into context, and then you can write the statement to join it with the time series data based on the common key. So this is super, super useful in a wide variety of applications. I have tons of metadata about my systems and my servers that may be contained within a CMDB. I might have information about devices, including the manufacturer, the firmware version, when those things were deployed out none of which is in my time series database. But in order to make sense of this and to build a contextual application for an end user, you obviously have to combine that together. Super powerful to use Flux to join those data sets together. And if any of you have specific data sets that you don't see up here stored in other databases, we can always build Flux uh, functions for that as well. So we'd love to hear the feedback from all of you about other things. So we've had requests for things like MongoDB, obviously, Snowflake, uh, and others, and it's not just from. These functions can also be used outbound as well. So if you're gathering a ton of data from, uh, from all of your various devices and sensors, you may want to aggregate that and produce an aggregated output that goes to a SQL source that then you can run all sorts of billing, reporting, and other kinds of applications on top of that are already connected within your ecosystem, okay? So Influx will handle the high volume, high scale, time series data allow you to run those aggregation queries and functions on top, and then move the data where you need it to be, working with data where it resides. So of course, how do you gain access to this awesome technology? There's two modes, of course. So today, uh, we're announcing that we have both InfluxDB Enterprise, which is the horizontal scale out and commercial version, available for you to manage and run within uh, AWS, and you can get it through the marketplace. You can buy it on an hourly basis, or you can buy it on an annualized basis. Go ahead, sign up, and of course, it's uh, got AWS integrated billing, so it'll appear right on your regular AWS bill. Secondarily, today we announced InfluxDB Cloud 2.0 is also available on the AWS Marketplace. So again, you can sign up, find Influx, select either edition you want, either enterprise or cloud, go ahead and register, uh, and it's a fully pay-as-you-go serverless architecture. So you only pay for what you use. Storage, query, ingest, that's it, simple. And then it'll all appear on your AWS bill. So you go ahead and sign up, it'll be there, you get your login credentials and you're good to go. With that, follow us on Twitter. I will not tweet any political commentary, only stuff about Influx. So if you wanna follow up with, uh, with us on any of the topics that you saw today, great. And I will take any questions. Who is our competition? So one of the things is, as an open source provider of this technology, we believe that the reason why people come to us is extensibility, right? We haven't built a specific application. It's a platform for dealing with all of this data. 
and it's an open platform, so you can literally do whatever you want. So some use case examples we have, everything from solar energy, agribusinesses monitoring dew point and the moisture content of soil, to DevOps monitoring use cases that you could buy a traditional application in. But usually, uh, people will come to us because there's something specific or special within their application environment or their technology environment that they don't necessarily know how to instrument, or they can't get a specific agent or class or something from one of the package application vendors to do that instrumentation. If that's your problem or your use case, we're here to help you with that problem. So a single node of, of InfluxDB open source will handle 300,000 points a second, one node. So we're running uh, today a 12 node cluster for one of our customers with 250 million series, and each node is taking on that amount of load. So yeah, it's, it's, it's big. big, big data, lots of metrics. What's the cost of the smallest? You have to check in the marketplace for the, the prices are posted there, but you can buy it on an hourly basis. So that's the smallest cost. And then for the cloud edition, the pay as you go, there's a free tier that you could start with, um, or you can, uh, again, the pay as you go prices are posted, but it's, it's pennies per, uh, per unit, basically. Other questions? All right, thank you for coming and joining the lightning session on InfluxDB. Please uh, follow up with us, thank you.